black woman. I got some news for you, though. Y'all better stop running around talking about something. I'm going to start dating outside of my race and explore my options. Listen, black woman, you are of the sun people. You take your ass up in that ice with that ashy ding a ling and your ass going to come back with all kind of shit and I don't want to hear nothing because the sun woman ain't got no business letting the ice man swim in her ocean. This is why I've never been on Oprah. <laughs> and it's sad because she made Dr. Phil a millionaire. She made a white psychologist a multi-millionaire. No one knew his name before Oprah. And I've never been on her couch for five minutes. Got all the degrees he got, never been on her couch for five minutes. What's the next law Willie Lynch taught? Willie Lynch said if you want to control your Negroes in Ohio, if you want to control them Negroes in Cleveland, find every penny difference you can muster and use it against each other. Wow. He said put the light skin in Cleveland against the dark, put the college educated against the ones who dropped out, put the Zetas against the Sigma Gamma Rose and the Deltas against the AKAs and the Kappas against the Qs and the Sigmas against the Alphas and the Iotas against the Grooves. Put the Christians against the Muslims and the Gariites against the Socialists and the Nawakis against the Moors and the Nation of Islam against the Hebrews. And if you do this, they'll never come together. Cleveland, you should feel embarrassed that white folk can go to sleep at night in this city after what they did to Tamir Rice. <laughs> and not only Tamir Rice, but what they do to all of us on a regular basis. How can white America sleep so peacefully with 40 million disgruntled blacks amongst them? How can they sleep? without an iota worry of what you might do. I'll tell you how they can sleep because they have sown so many petty differences in Cleveland that before you ever get around to fighting them once, you gotta fight each other a thousand times. Brothers and sisters, it's time to put the differences to the side. I will unite with the Moors, I will unite with the Hebrews, I will unite with the nation of Islam, I will unite with the Christians, I will unite with the Muslims. I will even unite with the vegetarians when y'all stop trying to tell me what the fuck I can eat. <laughs> except seafood, fish. And I think I only slipped once because I thought the turkey was greens. <laughs> but I'm working on it. I'm doing good. So I think I only had meat once or twice this whole month. So I'm working on it. But I do want to say this. I'm not trying to be skinny as hell though. The minute I start looking smoked out, I'm going to give me the biggest damn 
drumstick I could find. Cause that skinny shit don't look right when you got a big ass head like mine. Are y'all feeling me? I'm not trying to have no 100 pound body with a big ass breastfed head. It don't work. It don't work. And black women, stop getting them tummy tucks. And that light bulb thing where they make your stomach small so you can never eat a lot. Because some of y'all sisters don't understand that it don't matter if you're small if it's unattractive. See, if you got a 50 gallon head <laughs> and you only weigh 110 pounds, that shit ain't cute. It don't, your body gotta match your head size. I'm tired of seeing black women with this big ass head and a teeny body. You look disproportionate. <laughs> now, what's the third thing Willie Lynch said? And then I'm prepared to round it out. Willie Lynch said, if you do this last thing, this will guarantee your control over all your Negroes. He said, line up all the slave women side by side. Get all the slave children, it doesn't matter how young they are, line them up side by side. Find the biggest, meanest, toughest alpha male in your stable. Bring that Negro out before all the winches and all the Negro children. And beat that man down to within an inch of his life. Don't kill him, but beat him so bad that he will wish he was dead. He said, if the women try to turn away, make them watch. If the kids try to run, make them watch. After you beat them down and make them see it, pick that Negro up, tar and feather him, and then find two horses. Tie his leg to one horse facing this direction and the other leg to the other horse facing that direction. Beat both horses simultaneously until they run apart from one another and split that nigga's body in half. He said, if you do this, the natural love and respect that the black woman has for the black man, she will lose it. The natural disposition the black woman has to rely on her man for protection, she will become the protection herself. He said, women naturally look to their men to provide and protect, but after they see what you do to their provider and they protect her in front of their face, they will no longer respect him, but look at the black man with contempt. But he said, guess what? That's not even the greatest benefit of this technique. That black woman, seeing what was done to her husband, will raise that black boy in her stomach to be a damn coward and a wimp and a simp ass negro because she will be afraid that what the white man did to her husband she will do to her son. Black mothers in here, I want to thank you all for the excellent job y'all been doing raising our kids. Many of you been doing it on your own. Brothers, give the sisters a hand. They will hold down the babies. They deserve our respect. However, sister, there's one or two of you in here who are doing exactly what Willie Lynch designed for your ass to do. Raise your son to be a simp ass, no responsibility having, no accountability having, spoiled ass Negro male child. Black woman, stop spoiling your son. You're not benefiting that boy. All you're doing is making somebody else's daughter bed harder to lay in. In other words, too many black women are raising their sons to be the exact type of man you yourself would never want to date. And I got something else to say on that. And this goes to the fathers and the mothers. If you are a custodial parent, you better never let your mouths utter the words to me that you're not taking your child to the prison to see their mother or father 
because you ain't the reason they got locked up. I don't give a damn if you're the reason or not. You're the reason that child is here, ain't you? So take him to that prison. A father in jail is still a father. A mother in jail is still a mother. And who the hell are you to excommunicate a child from his biological parent? I got an email last week. This father emailed me, said, Dr. Johnson, I need your advice. I got two kids. They mother a smoker. She was a prostitute. She was doing all this stuff. My wife is a lawyer. She has her own business. She treats them like her own. And all they keep asking for is mommy. What should I do? What the hell you mean, what should you do? Their mother is their mother. A child don't care if the mom on crap, homeless, unemployed. Everybody wants a relationship with their God-given parents. But some of you brothers think if you find a good enough woman, your children will forget about their mom. It'll never happen. Right. Some of you mothers think that if you find a good enough surrogate dad, that the kids will stop looking for their own. Are you crazy? This ain't about money. It ain't about education. It's about knowing my own DNA connection. And on that note, we all are responsible for the violence that we're seeing in our neighborhood. Black children are the last to be adopted in this country. Most of us don't even want to be foster parents, more or less adopted parents. Do you remember 40 years ago, 30 years ago, when we was growing up? If the next door neighbor's children were home alone, and that mom was out doing what she was doing, or the dad got locked up, did we call the caseworker? Did we call the cops? What did grandma do? She would go next door, Tell them kids to get their books, get your school clothes, come on over, you stand with us. And sometimes the real parents didn't turn up for another month. Sometimes they didn't turn up for another three months. Sometimes they never turned up at all. Did we ever turn them into the damn city? Hell no. Grandma took care of them kids. Grandma could barely take care of the kids she got, but we believed that all the kids were ours. We never told the school. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all was raised like that. By a next door neighbor who cared enough about me to not give me to the white man. They raised you, they fed you, they treated you like one of their own. And sometimes the school never even knew that mommy and daddy was out of their life because we didn't believe telling our business to the damn system. What happened to that, Cleveland? Why we don't look out for other people's children no more? Cleveland. Come on. Marcus Garvey said, His Excellency Marcus Messiah Garvey said, the leader of the largest black organization in modern history said that if the black man and woman are not careful, you will drink in all the poison of Western civilization and you will die from the effects of it. They come into our homes and take our kids, and then they give our kids to homosexual white folks to raise. Did you know that in Chicago, they have a new sex education curriculum for middle school, where they teach the fifth through eighth graders, among other things, how to use anal condoms. This is going on right now in Chicago. Now, y'all over in iron, you might find out they're doing it right here in Cleveland. In Atlanta, they just opened up an all LGBTQ school for gay black kids. They just came out with a homosexual Bible. New York has an all LBGTQ school right now. Listen to me, because we might have some LBGTQ here tonight. I want you brothers and sisters to know that I do not hate you. You still my brother, you still my sister, I love you, but I disagree with your lifestyle, and I have a right to my opinion. 
and I'm not going to change it regardless of how much shit you post on Facebook or how many letters you write to Obama because my decisions are not based on your opinions. I'm going to tell y'all where all this shit comes from. Once upon a time, when God created the world, he created a group of people called the sun people. The sun people lived under the sun. The sun gave them everything that they needed. They had fresh drinking water. They had animals for clothing. If they wanted fruit, they could climb up in the tree and get the fruit. If they needed crops, the crops would grow once or twice every year. They didn't have to ask nobody for diamonds, they had them. They came in the water. Silver, coal tan, oil, gas, whatever the sun people needed, the sun gave it to them. And because the sun blessed the sun people with abundance, the sun people were not a people who stole from others. They were not a people who manipulated others. They were not a people who took more than their share. They were a free giving people who believed in taking care of everybody. In fact, in the land of the sun, there was no such thing as a front door on your house because you didn't need one because nobody went where they were not invited. These were the sun people. They were happy. They created a literal paradise on earth. They lived in harmony with nature, harmony with the water, harmony with the hurricane, harmony with the tornado. When the food ran out, the sun people didn't get upset. They said, you know what? Just wait. The sun will give us what we need again. And they respected the sun so much that people thought that they worshipped the sun. They never worshipped the sun. They worshipped the God who created the sun. But see... God created another group of people called the ice people. Ice people didn't live under no sun, brothers and sisters. They lived under the ice. It was cold. They couldn't find no food because nothing could grow. No fruit, no vegetable. It was too cold for anything to sprout. So whenever they got hungry, they had to eat the mice and the worms and the maggots off the floor. They had to try to melt the ice so they could drink that dirty rainwater. When they got too hungry and there was no mice or maggots around, they would just kill each other and eat human flesh and drink the blood out of their own family skulls. And because the sun never blessed the ice people, they hated the damn sun. They hated nature. They do not believe in living in harmony with shit. And guess what? Because they never had enough of what they needed, they would steal, they would manipulate, they would connive, they would strategize, they were deceptive, they were dishonest, because this was the only way that they could survive. And then one day, the sun people, excuse me, one day, the ice people ventured out of the caves of Europe and came down into the sunny land of Africa. And they walked in and looked around and said to each other, do you see this shit? <laughs> <laughs> they got food on the damn tree, diamonds all over their body, gold everywhere you can look, the animals don't mess with them with none of that shit. And they went to the sun people, and the sun people said, guess what, ice people? It's not our fault that the sun cursed you. But we want to teach you how to be people again. So the queen mothers came out. You know how y'all sisters do. The sun women came out with some of that African black soap. They said, bring them little dirty ass white kids. <laughs> start washing their ass. Yeah, you gotta wash your ass, little boy. Yeah. 
<laughs> and do you went to the ice women and she had hair grown all under her arm? He said, this shit is ridiculous. You came with it. You clipped that shit. Listen, this is nasty. Cut this shit off and put some deodorant under there. Get some degree or some shit. And then when the ice woman had their monthly, you had to, you don't walk around with that running out of you. There's a way we handle that. Behave like a lady. And then when she started cooking, they would just kill the animal and eat the shit raw. And they still love their meat raw and rare. So the sun woman had to go tell the ice woman, you don't eat the damn thing without cooking it. You gotta put some jerk sauce on this shit with a paprika at. Put some seasoning. And you gotta turn this shit over the sun. Where y'all been at? These ice people don't know shit. And then after you got them to wash their body with the African black soap, they was all ashy. So you had to go and get 25 pounds of shea butter. <laughs> and you had to shea butter. Come on, this shit is assy. Wash the hair. Shea butter. But guess what? The more you help the ice people, the more they hated your ass. Their contempt and animosity grew because they felt you looked down on them when all you was trying to do was help them. And one day they said, we gonna do something about this shit. We gonna take every diamond, we gonna take every ounce of gold, we gonna take every animal and make it our own. See, sun people, we live in harmony with the sun. When a tornado comes, we know it's gonna pass, we don't mess with it. Ice people can't leave shit alone. <laughs> When a tornado come, they want to see if they can fly in that shit. <laughs> right? Some people, we respect our animals. We were the first to domesticate the animals, right? We was the first to bring kittens in the house and all that. We live in home, not ice people. They will take the cat and say, I think I could turn the cat into a dog and start cloning shit. They don't know how to leave nothing alone. Sun people, we see a long snake coming down the street. We don't mess with it. That's the snake. Handle your business. I'm out of here. <laughs> Not ice people. They will say, I'm going to see if I could crawl in his mouth. <laughs> Sun people, we say, man is supposed to be with woman. And woman is supposed to be with man. Because that's the way the sun set it up. Not the ice people. They say man is supposed to be with man. And woman is supposed to be with woman. And then they also said man is supposed to be with boy. You ain't clapping. You ain't supposed to clap for that shit. You're not, you're not gullible or naive. The problem is you are the sun people. And your temperament is a son temperament based on love for everything. But the man you're trying to integrate with has a ice temperament that is based on hatred to everything. So the ancestors sent me to Cleveland to tell you, son people, you better leave the ice people the hell alone. Because if you don't leave them the hell alone, one day, they're going to take the land of the sun and send the sun people to go live under the damn ice. White people have been psycho-socially and genetically engineered to be who they are. We didn't put them in the ice. And it's not your job to try to save them. And if you keep on trying to save their asses, they're going to end up exterminating us. Sun people, we don't come up with diseases, do we? No black person went around and said, I want to create a bomb that can kill the whole world. We don't do shit like that. Black people don't say, I'm going to come up with a disease that can wipe out everybody on the planet. Who? We don't think like that. 
And that's why when our kids in the school, they say, Dr. Umar, if we were so great, how did the white man come and take Africa if we were so great? Because the white man benefited from two things. Number one, his inhumanity. And number two, he benefited from an unfortunate circumstance in history known as the firearm. The gun is how he decimated Africa with bullets. We wasn't worried about guns and shit because we were not into wholesale genocide. Church. As I bring this to a close, I want to say, brothers and sisters, that stop letting white folk tell you that you should stop talking about slavery because Africans participated in the Ma'afa. It's true, some Africans participated. But most of our ancestors who were made slaves were not made slaves by black folk. That is a lie. Yet and still, although there was black complicity in slavery, are you not aware that it was Jewish complicity in the Jewish Holocaust? Are you not aware that Adolf Hitler was financed by Jewish bankers in New York City, Wall Street? So if you want to tell me I can't talk about slavery because blacks participated, then I don't want to see another goddamn movie about the Jewish Holocaust because your people participated in your slavery as well. So, Dr. Umar, do you hate white people? Of course not. I even help them with their children. They call me too on the down low. <laughs> and I'll help them as long as I'm not taking away from mine. But I need some of y'all blacks in Cleveland to understand because y'all get it wrong. Y'all think racism is about emotions. I have white friends. No, you don't. You think you have a white friend. <laughs> Listen, racism ain't got nothing to do with hatred. Yes, there's white folks who hate blacks, but there's a lot of white folks who don't hate blacks, but they still racist. Why? Because racism ain't about hating you. Racism is about manipulating and deceiving and conniving to make sure people who look like me stay in charge. So what are you saying, Dr. Umar? I'm saying that you can have white friends who you grew up with, but guess what? There might come an opportunity for your white friend to tell you about a job offer that makes you her boss. And instead of telling you that there was a supervisory position that she was qualified for and she wasn't, she went and told a white person she didn't even know. And the white person she didn't even know got the job over her best black friend who she grew up with since she was in kindergarten. How do you explain this, Dr. Umar? It's real simple. Your relationship with your white friend was personal. Keeping white people in charge of niggas is business. Preach. And that's the problem with y'all in Ohio. You don't know how to separate business from personal. White people can laugh with you. They can go to the bar with you, go eat with you, go on vacation with you, sleep with you. That won't make a bit of difference when it comes to who gonna be in control at the end of the day. And you black men dating white women, your trifling ass should be ashamed of yourself for going outside of your place disrespecting black women like that. Who the hell you think you with? Running around with these white women. That's a damn disgrace. Church. So you better realize that I'm a principal and an educator. 
So I got third graders who will come to me and say, Dr. Johnson, what's wrong with me? What do you mean, princess? I noticed that when black men get a halfway decent job or a master's degree or better, they always end up taking a white woman more often than not. They can tell in the second grade. So we got little black girls feeling like they're not good enough because black men forgot who their mother was. I'm not disrespecting the white female. She should not have to worry about ever being disrespected by me or you. But because I'm loyal to the black woman, I cannot approve no bullshit that lets you marry another woman that don't look like your mom. And then on top of that, she not even cute. <laughs> start stretching. They get like three chins and shit under their neck. They got a wife under each chin. <laughs> three kids, they swell all up. And ain't got no cooking skills whatsoever. You eat cold mayonnaise sandwiches. <laughs> like, damn, brother, is that your wife? Or your mother? What the fuck? That's your mother? No, that's my wife. Damn! She been through some kind of trauma? You know that saying where they say, uh, 30 is the new 40? That came from black women. Because y'all hold so well that they said 30 is the new 40. 30 is the new 40. So I came up with some shit for the white woman. And I said, 40 is the new 100, what y'all looking at? <laughs> 40 is the new 100. <laughs> you can't help who you fall in love with. What kind of shit is that? <laughs> I went to school with white women, undergrad with white women, three master's degrees white women, PhD white women still work with them now. Yes, there's been white women who've been attracted to me, and I politely tell them I do not marry outside of my race. And they don't understand it because you Negroes be thirsting over them women. See, marriage is an economic arrangement. Yeah. When you marry somebody, you are marrying your wealth or what you will develop into wealth. White people already took enough shit from us. Why am I going to marry a white woman so when I die, she get all my stuff and it don't go to my people? Why would I do something like that? And black woman, I got some news for you though. I better stop running around talking about something. I'm going to start dating outside of my race and explore my options. Listen, black woman, you are of the sun, people. You take your ass up in that ice with that ashy ding a -ling, and your ass going to come back with all kind of shit, and I don't want to hear nothing because the sun woman ain't got no business letting the ice man swim in her ocean. They are ice people. They don't do nothing natural. He get your ass alone. He don't want to come through the front door. He want to go through your back door. He want to have you doing all kinds of stuff. Chains, bones, knives. He's an ice man. Get away from his ass. Black 
when they talk about this love with a white man. He ain't doing nothing but using you. I've had white men tell me that when they grow up, they're taught to have sex with black women because since you're the mother of civilization, they believe that there is no greater sex you can have than with a black woman. And they will lie and manipulate you and do all they can to climb up into your heaven. And what the hell is a goddess doing letting the devil swim in her heaven? you to know that. You got a black mom, white dad, black dad, white mom. You still us because you ain't responsible for how you got here. You belong to us, but I need you to act like it, damn it. Because some of you biracials want to play that shit game with us where you want to act black at the Umar Johnson lecture, but when I catch your ass in the suburbs with your Jewish grandparents, you act like you don't see me in a damn supermarket, you fake ass cracker. If you black, then act black and stop being afraid to be what the hell God made your ass. Tired of that biracial shit. Act like you don't see me. Your ass saw me. That Obama shit. As I conclude, and I hope this was worth your time, Cleveland. I'm gonna tell y'all something about Gory Island Synagogue. That slave dungeon, there's some power in there. I went there 10 years ago as a 30-year-old minister of education for Marcus Garvey's Universal Negro Improvement Association. I was raised a Sunni Orthodox Muslim. I know nothing about no ancestral veneration, but I heard about it. I took some water like this and I got down on one knee. And I said, let me see if this libation stuff really works. So I started pulling out a libation to the ancestors. Basically saying, I'm sorry you went through this. If I can help you, please let me know. I go back to my hotel room. It was still daylight outside. I called my mother on the phone, tell her I was about to go to bed. I went into my hotel room and sat down. I didn't have a roommate, it was only me. And as soon as I sat on the bed, the room got dark. It started spinning around. I started hearing chains, whips, screams, the roar of lions, elephants, birds. I tried to go to sleep because I was so terrified. And every time I tried to sleep, two hands that I could not see would shake my body so hard that I couldn't sleep. I would roll over to the other side of the bed and it would happen again. I would stand up and something would tap me on my, three, my third eye three times. And it kept on doing this. There's nobody in the room. It's still light outside. This was not a dream. And something was fucking with me in my room. So I went to some of the brothers in the village and I told them what happened. And they said, that's your ancestors celebrating your return home. I said, what do you mean? They said, for y'all Africans in America, some of you Africans in America, and I know some of y'all not African. <laughs> but I'm willing to bet that if you go with me to Ghana, I will find somebody who looks just like your non-African ass, okay? But they told me that when Africans come back home, our ancestors are so happy we return that sometimes they jump you, not to scare you, but out of celebration that you reconnected. So I get back home to Philadelphia, right? I went to West Philadelphia. There's a brother selling some old slave chains. I'm a historian. I went and I bought the slave chains. I got back home. I said, I'm gonna take these slave chains upstairs. I'm gonna put them under my TV stand. That's gonna be my altar for these chains. So after I sat down, I put the chains under the TV and I sat back up. And guess what happened a few days after I got back from Goriath? The same three taps that hit me in my hotel room on my third eye tapped me with the same strength in the same manner when I put them chains under that TV. Do you know what that meant? That meant that what happened in Senegal was not a damn dream. And we came back with you over the ocean because you got work to do. Brothers and sisters, if you've never been to Africa, consider going with me. We're going to Senegal in Ghana. 
The last week of July, first week of August. It is always the same. Last week of July, first week of August, the trip will be approximately $4,500. Everything is included except your spending money and half of your meals. In Senegal, we're going to go to Gori Island. Some of y'all might get jumped out there. In fact, sister, you wear a perm, they might shave the shit off in the dungeon. <laughs> I'm picking with you, I'm picking with you. <laughs> we wanna go to Pink Lake, we wanna go to the National Museum in Senegal. You're gonna get a chance to get some Senegalese clothing made because the Senegalese African clothing is a little bit different. I went to Dashiki, I got made in Ghana, custom made. Guess how much it cost me? 20 US dollars. I came back with 30 last year. In fact, I think I go to Ghana just for the Dashikis. But anyway, <laughs> after we do Senegal, we wanna take you to the Elmina Slave Dungeon, Cape Coast Castle Slave Dungeon in Ghana. You're going to participate in the Emancipation Day ceremony where we celebrate the end of slavery in Ghana. We march from the middle of the city square all the way up to the slave dungeon at night in the dark. And when we get to the slave dungeon, we go down in one of the dungeons and one of the, the priests and the chiefs of the village, they do a libation to all the ancestors who passed through there. And then we go upstairs into the main courtyard of the dungeon. And then there's a celebration of dance and music and poetry. And I just sit on the edge and watch the water as it smacks up against the dungeon wall. Some of the most violent water in the world is the water outside of the dungeons because the spirits of your ancestors are still there. We want to take you to where Yah Asantewa was imprisoned. You want to go to the Prepe Museum. You're going to get an African spiritual reading for those of you who want to get interested in African spirituality. Sisters, you can get your hair braided the African way. We also have a cookout on an island in Ghana with some elders from Washington, D.C. who moved back to Ghana permanently. They have an island and we do a cookout every year with music and food and we just watch the water and the animals run around. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if you ain't been, go with me. You will love it. I don't make any money off the Ghana trip. I don't do it for money. The travel agent does. That's her business. I don't make any money because I don't do it for money. I do it to reconnect you to your roots. The only way you can charge is the charge back home. And a lot of you have been through so much shit in your life, you are in need of an ancestral battery charge. And there's no time like the present to get in connection with your ancestors. Much love. You can't help who you fall in love with. What kind of shit is that? <laughs>